Hello there, I'm Yanis. And I'm Al, we're from the Arcweave Weave team. So uh, this is another episode uh, from our case study videos where we interview teams and studios that use Arcweave in their game design workflow. And today we have Harun Ali uh, from Bad Reaction Games and we'll discuss with him their very English point and click adventure comedy, It's Grim Up North. Hello everyone, thanks so much for having me. Oh, I'll just kind of go for like a, a Yorkshire intro. Be like, hey, up me duck, how you all doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, could you tell us a bit about the Bad Reaction team? What do you do? What does your brother do? How do you um, divide up the work between you two? Yeah, so like we're like a very small remote um, indie company, kind of mainly based in Bradford in West Yorkshire. Um, so initially our team was just three of us. It was me, my brother and my friend Faisal. Um, I myself, um, I guess I'm the creative director. I, I like to give myself big titles because it was feel more important. Um, but like I, I'm the sort of like creative director slash designer. So I've, I've come up with like sort of the game design um, and sort of the premise for the game. My brother, he's primarily focused on the writing. So, so uh, if you have any laughs in the game, that's thanks to him because he's done he's done some fantastic jokes in there. And uh, Faisal, who was our initial um, lead artist, he kind of created like a vast majority of. Um, the environments are, but our team has kind of expanded over the last year to include like a lot more people. Oh, that's so cool. So uh, have you done other projects before this or is this your first big game together? Uh, this is, uh, well, I work in the games industry as well. So this is kind of like a, a passion project that I work on on the side. So I have worked on like a number of sort of uh, big games in the past myself. Uh, for the rest of our team, uh, this is kind of like their first game. Like we probably do, like little small things, like little like game jam stuff, and just like little personal projects. But but for a lot of people on this team, um, this is kind of their first kind of hopefully commercial game when, if we get announced mm -hmm. to release. So if they didn't work on commercial games before, what are the rest of your team's backgrounds? So we have like a number of artists. We've had a few that kind of come and gone over time. Our current artists, um, Alistair, uh, Tezuki, because they prefer to use their online aliases. Um, Yokos, who else we've got? Um, we've called um, Kawi Pixels. Uh, they're all like freelance uh, pixel artists. Um, so they kind of take on sort of work on sort of various different places. Um, and they've been sort of really nice enough to kind of like the idea and vision of our game to actually give me the time to actually you know make some really cool um work for the game my brother who he's he's a freelance uh video vid videographer and like a video editor so he does that as kind of his sort of like his full-time role as a freelancer um but he has kind of dabbled in sort of like a lot of different sort of cre creative stuff as well so like creating docu document document uh, documentaries uh and he's also trying to write his own little comic books as well so this is kind of his first like wow. video game project so i think writing his own comic book compared to writing a video game is like it's a totally different medium so he's kind of having to learn like mm -hmm. a lot of, lot of things going through the process wow comic book so he, he he's a writer not does he also illustrate or no he's just a writer at the moment it's, it's definitely a passion project for him he's, he's always been interested in getting into comics so he's he's doing his comic stuff on the side as he's doing his sort of his freelancing work as a, as a video editor he loves doing like sort of a lot of different sort of creative things so it's really nice that he's kind of dabbling in sort of different things you know video comics and now video games great uh so let's get to the game what's the game about what's the pitch so the uh the elevator pitch that i would like to give people is it's last of summer wine meets strong carpenters i think <laughs> if you don't know what last, last of summer wine is go with hot fuzz meets the thing <laughs> um that was kind of the idea <laughs> that we're going for um it kind of came about from a um a yorkshire game jam we had, had here like a, a few years ago and i thought it would be funny to, to have a game where aliens attempt to take over a small yorkshire village so you play as terry who is a uh, an old detective who's kind of like in his heyday of his life who finally finds like a new exciting adventure when aliens attempt to shape switching aliens sorry try to take over his village one of the things that i loved most was that the british humor um like it was so funny i was laughing out loud a lot it reminded me of things like blackadder uh, monty python um so uh, did you have any specific inspirations for the writing or the humor um like the comedy parts of the game we got we had like a lot of um our inspirations from like a lot of sort of classic british comedies a lot of them you kind of already mentioned like we grew up um watching stuff like only fools and horses last of summer wine that i've kind of mentioned um blackadder red dwarf bottom you know, like a lot of sort of like the rick mail um 
in Emerson stuff. Um, so yeah, we kind of grew up consuming a lot of that of that media over the years, and we kind of wanted to kind of uh, fit that kind of uh, genre of, of comedy in there as well. I was thinking about Shaun of the Dead, but then you said Hot Fuzz, and that actually made more sense to mm -hmm. me. Still si Simon Pegg, of course, but uh, yeah. A lot of the people reminded me of real people I've met. So did you base any of them off real people? Or were there any like real inspirations from it, from your real life? It's, it's a combination of uh, inspirations from British comedy, especially like the sort of more classical um, uh, shows and a lot of people from our own real life. I think a lot of the um, you'll see like if when people play like, the demo, which will hopefully come out in in February, like there's a lot of like sort of like road men, chubby characters. They're definitely inspired by a lot of people we have met <laughs> in Bradford. <laughs> um, but in the same way, like the next one, they all the characters as well. So it's like a combination of sort of real world influences and um, uh, preferences to like old British comedies. Mm -hmm. And so without saying too many spoilers, uh, a big theme of the game is this feeling of invasion, um, specifically invasion from southerners. Um, being from Yorkshire yourself, is there any kind of like real message that you're exploring here or is it just a piece of fun? We've had like discussions about this in the past of like what, it, what like if you wanted to put some just like some subtle or not so subtle like social commentary in there. Um, I think we're just trying to make I think our main goal is to make people laugh. So I think even though we make little fun, little jabs of like the sort of like the North South divide that's in it's in the UK, it's just more for like just like sort of light hearted sort of fun. I'd like to ask because there is a, a stereotypic, uh, you know, a stereotypical uh, um, notion of what is English uh, in in the world, especially in a world dominated by the US culture and the pop culture. So how does a game? about Northern England uh, find its audience and what audience is that? Well, I think uh, our audience first and foremost is like adventure game enthusiasts. I think when we ever we pitch the game and show people it, we always kind of say like, if you were a fan of like old school sort of LucasArts point and click adventure games or even some more modern, but they're not modern, they're quite old now, like a lot of, some of the older sort of telltale games. Like I think like you'll find a home here. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to kind of go for like sort of the Yorkshire setting was because um, I was inspired by like another another game that was also like a point of adventure sort of game set in Yorkshire, which kind of kickstarted off the Yorkshire Games Jam as well, which is called Yorkshire Goblins. So it's kind of like it was really cool and awesome just seeing like an element of like a place that I grew up just kind of show like being. Um, consumed by other people to kind of show like a different side of the uk because i think a lot of people when they think of like the uk especially like games they always think of like it's always set like down south sort of london sort of more stereotypical red red letter boxes and that kind of stuff um, not like boxes are phone boxes <laughs> but, um, exactly uh, exactly <laughs> that's that's the stereotypical thing the queen the the you know the um the, the posh accent so it's different yeah yeah we, we want to try to like make it look and feel as much like a sort of like a a small sort of Yorkshire village as much as possible. I think a lot of people do like that kind of setting because, like, especially like the you know sh shows like was it um, Bob and Paul um, fishing? I think I probably got the name of the show, show wrong, but um, you know that that is like a lot of great sort of like you know northern scen scenery. So we wanted to kind of like represent that in a sort of like a pixel art way as well. Yeah, I, I really love that personally. Just as a British person, I feel like so much games, even if they're not set in America, they're so Americanified. So it's really such a brush of mm. fresh air to get something that's so just clearly British, written by British people. It really makes me laugh. The slang um, in it specifically, the, the dialogue writing it was so funny. We tried to find like a big a big balance between like um, making it like quintessentially British but also accessible to other people like I think mm -hmm. initially we were going to have like a lot more sort of like northern and sort of specifically English slang but I, I wanted to try to find a fine balance between uh, being um, accessible to anyone throughout the whole world but also being quintessentially British well it's a bit it's a hard fine line mm -hmm. to find but I think like I hope we found it. Moving away from the game and more towards Arcweave specifically uh, how has Arcweave helped you with the development of your game? It's been kind of like the core of um, making the game. So when we initially started this as like a side project, like a few years ago, I think Arcweave was just in its sort of infancy at the time. So it doesn't have like a lot of cool that it does now. Um, we were trying to find like a way of designing the game and, and the puzzle and doing the script writing. I think initially we we wrote the script just on like a word doc word document. Um, I think I did some of the initial sort of designs, like the, the layouts of levels and stuff in uh, a word document. But I really liked 
Arcweave. I like the fact that it's, it's sort of like really collaborative and the fact that like I can just kind of create these sort of really great flow charts and I actually can kind of like almost visually and also text wise like you know see how the games progress so I've done all my initial designs of the levels in Arcweave first so I can plot out so I would have like it's almost like a spire diagram so I'd have in the center like a big wall of text that would be like this is part one of this puzzle I'd break it down explaining what the puzzle is and then it kind of branches off into like the specific components so it's like um so it's like oh terry needs to enter the pub i explain like what the what the premise is uh what terry needs to do but then there's little branches saying you know you need to pick up a key and it'll link to like a different board so even if you don't want to read that huge wall of text like it branches off and you can clearly see like okay this is what harun has intended for this design and it's been really great for like, the script writing process as well because obviously being an interactive media like video games you have multiple different dialogue options so hasin's been able to kind of like branch off and be like okay this is like this you can kind of focus specifically on the core puzzle dialogue first and then like come back to it and be like okay here's some just miscellaneous stuff to kind of help create that um that world building so uh you want to tell us more about your workflow i understand you made the game in unity how did the integration work and and also in the archive workflow as well so our workflow usually consists of start off in archive first uh do the core um level floor so i'd come up with the premise of the of, of the level i design it all out in um in arcree first uh then i start actually creating the level uh in unity using a toolkit called the adventure creator because i can't script to save my life i wish i could um so it's a lot of sort of visual visual scripting so a lot like a lot of editing of nodes and stuff so i can always refer back to arcree to be like okay this is what i've intended for this particular puzzle i know like how how this puzzle is meant to play out like what are the key interactions they say like is it like a look at look at option talk to pick, picking up combinations so i'd always keep going back and forth referring to arcweave um and then implementing it into uh unity same with the script as well like we do all the sort of the proofreading um grammar spelling stuff would all happen in arcweave first and then once it's ready we'd put it into unity so it'd be initial um arcweave designs like on quote unquote paper on Arcweave, um, start building the gray box in Unity, getting just like the core functionalities in there. And then once all that's in place, we'd go into Arcweave and start pulling the script over into um, Unity. Um, that way we know like, okay, this is all fine. It's been proofread. We are happy with it. We don't have to kind of like keep filling back, uh, back and forth between two different software. We're happy with that. It's just brought, brought straight over into Unity. Did you also write the logic in Arcweave? So you had your all your variables, your story variables in Ar Arcweave, uh, checking if there's a key, if there is no key, all this logic. Half and half, because I think first it, it didn't have that uh, features initially, but then we started adding in. Uh, when well, did you start using Arcweave? <laughs> when, I, I when, are like... you like customer number three or something? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to remember because like I think has because Hasim uses it. I'll, uh, uh, quite a lot to kind of like you know connect branches and and branch off uh, dialogue options. We started using it initially, I think, 2019, 2018. So it was it was okay. a while ago as like a little passion project thing, and then we kind of invested in it buying the uh, the premium version to kind of get to get access to, um, to more features, more boards, and having more more of the team um, integrated into it. That is a long time you've been developing this game, and so uh, over the course of these few years. What do you think the biggest challenge has been? Uh, biggest challenge has been time, uh, just because like before, before it was definitely just more like a side project that we were kind of slowly working on. It, we had some problems during development. We had to kind of almost scrap it and start of restart it a little bit. So it's kind of gone through like a few iterations. It's definitely not gone through like the sort of traditional sort of like game development workflow. Um, but this year has been kind of like the the biggest push for it because we managed to get. Um, uh, some funding from UK Games Fund, and that's really helped, um, you know, able to invest in more people, which gave us more time to develop the game. So, how it looked like a year year or so ago, it looks vastly different. Like we've actually been able to like properly polish up the the gameplay, the workflows, and because we've had that funding through UK Games Fund, uh, we managed to actually expand Chapter One. So you you, you played the demo. Um, that demo was initially going to be the just. Um, that was chapter one. It was going to be you entering the pub and finding the the villain, but because we had like this influx, we were like, oh, okay, let's add in the part where you have to get into the pub, so you have to interact with these characters near uh, Ronnie's uh, shop, and then there's stuff they haven't seen yet um, of like three or four other 
environments that you can go explore, more um, combat um, uh, scenarios that are coming up as well. I love the combat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite figure out everything about it. I didn't quite understand all of it, but uh, it was a good touch, nice touch to have the turn-based thing inside a point-and-click adventure. <laughs> but again, you you get it as a part of the whole humor thing because it's like the the the, the policeman fighting the aliens. A lot of the design stuff always comes down to what would be funny like the turn based stuff like i knew like i knew like for the uh for, for the base point of click, I thought, okay that's funny but what else can we do on, on top of on top of that and we thought oh why don't we just have like an old man fighting off against aliens in turn based combat and the reason was because we thought it was funny <laughs> <laughs> and was the actual design of the alien inspired by the thing by the thing of carpenter it's gone through like a f well i think the initial uh reference was uh, an alien in Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, I cannot no. remember the alien's name. It's the one that kills Tasha Yar. Like, it's like the black goo thing. I don't know if you... And, and it, some Trekkies out there who are watching this will be like, I, I, actually, it's this... Like, I know what it is. It was in an episode of Lower Decks, but I forgot the name. Um, so it was initially based off that. Um, and then we thought, okay, let's kind of develop it a bit more. What it just kind of make it more of a sort of like a, a gooey alien thing. We, we were trying to find a balance between not making it too gory and just making it sort of like cartoony. So I think we had like an initial design where it was literally just like a like a puddle of like meat almost. It had like this sort of weird eye coming out and we thought, mm, this doesn't really work. Maybe just like this sort of like this weird goo alien with some like tentacles and then when it transforms and morphs into different things, that's when we can kind of show the sort of the more, I guess, horror -y elements uh, of this creature. So it kind of starts off looking almost kind of cute, but kind of just like goofy, but then when we do like transformation animations, all these hot different things, it's kind of like, oh, this is kind of like slightly creepy. But you you should really push us a little bit and tell us any Arquive related uh, challenges that you faced. Were there any features that were actually missing and you were saying, oh, I wish Arquive had this. It would make our job much easier. Was there anything like that? Um, I think the only issues we had with Arquive was just some like general bugs. I think there were times where um, we were doing some writing and then just the text disappeared, which kind of set us back a little, little bit. <laughs> that never happened. That never happened. <laughs> um, but that, that's kind of like our, our only our, our only major issues was just like just little few bugs here and there. But I think the good thing is like I think in the past like my brother has reached out to like the Arquive team on like discord you know to, to try to answer any sort of queries now i've been sort of really, really nice and responsive um so but apart from like a few little bugs here and there like it's been it's been a really nice process i think only more recently it's like i think probably probably my pc a little bit is it kind of had a bit of slowdown here and there but like mostly it's been relatively fine that's great so at what stage is the game uh now so we're in our sort of i guess our beta stage now we're doing a lot of uh polishing we are hoping to have a initial release for chapter one of the game uh, of quarter one this this year um so i think like so yeah so we're spending the next sort of couple of months just polishing just cleaning up um art animations and just reading through the the text to make sure there's, there's not too many grammar or spelling mistakes and you're releasing it in chapters so what's the time what's the timeline for for the releases what's the uh, the plan uh, I think the plan right now is just to see how the initial uh, chapter goes. We want to see if there's like a, um, if, if there is like an appetite for more of it. Like we have the whole game kind of planned. Like we've already started work on chapters because it's, it's broken down into four chapters because they're very much inspired by sort of like the traditional sort of like Telltale style of um, mm. a point adventure games. I grew up playing like Summer Max, like their version of Summer Max, Strong Bad, uh, their Monkey Island games and stuff. Before before they did like the, the walking in stuff um so we, we thought okay let's let's do chapter one first let's release it and if there's an appetite for it we'll release subsequent chapters in terms of timelines mm. we ideally would like to try to release them like maybe six months apart but i think because we're all kind of working on it part-time and we don't want to rush it and we don't want to kind of like burn people out it'll it'll take as long as as, as it needed to come out because I'm, I'm very adamant of like not overworking people and, and pushing people i think because Especially with like some like AAA companies, they've done that in the past. Where people get burnt out, so I'm very conscious of making sure that like the team's happy and satisfied with the product. Have you given the demo out to many testers? Have you collected feedback on the game so far? 
we've got we've had some like internal playtesting. Uh, I've sent out to some some friends uh, to have to play it. They've enjoyed it. They've they've pointed out a bunch of bugs for me to to fix, uh, which is great. Um, we we are planning on showing it off hopefully at the Yorkshire Games Festival in March, um, and we're going to hopefully try to release uh, the demo that you've played uh, around the same time as next fest next fest, so around um, early to mid February. So from your overall experience with Bad Reaction Games and just your experience as a developer in the industry, do you have many takeaways or advice for other indie developers who are starting out in the space? I would say um, look into uh, government and even local uh, funding opportunities, uh, especially for like creators, because there are a lot of opportunities out there. UK Games Fund is a great place to start because they always kind of have a lot of grants that are essentially there to encourage people to do startups so you can kind of get that sort of like initial sort of cash cash influx to um uh to to build a uh, a, a small studio i would say try to think of a game that's kind of like small and easily doable within like a couple, couple of years possibly um just because if you have like a great grand idea it might require a lot more money and quite, quite a lot more time and especially if you are in a especially in the uk at the moment because it's you know the economy is kind of like all over the place yeah um, <laughs> you need to kind of consider like okay am i able to kind of like either quit my full-time job to focus on on this or you have to kind of factor in there's a lot of kind of factors you have to put in so it's like if you're working a full-time job doing it part-time your, your time skills might be a bit longer than it would be for like a, a normal sort of triple a or a double a studio great it was lovely having you haroon thank you so much um it was a great experience playing the demo, and uh, we are. Um, I am. I'm looking forward to to seeing the final result and comparing it with the demo as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, L, do you want to ask something else, or are we? Um, no, not really. Ready for our outro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like genuinely, it was just a really great game. I'm genuinely really excited for it. Uh, I think it's so fun. I I grew up on Professor Layton, which is like a Nintendo. Um, game if you if you know it and a lot of it reminded me it's like a very cheeky version of Professor Layton so <laughs> I really like that it really just spoke to me as a player it's my exact uh, kind of game and I'm a games writer as well like outside of Archive I've I have done games writing in the industry so I really just appreciated the dialogue writing I just thought it was really well written um, so yeah I'm really excited to get more into it when I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my I'm gonna tell my brother that he's gonna be really happy that you said that. <laughs> So, um, this was Yanis and L from Arquive and uh, interviewing Harun, uh, Harun Ali from Bad Reaction Games on the point and click adventure game It's Grim Up North. Thanks again, Harun. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for having me. And thank you all that are watching. And uh, if anyone else is making a game using Arcweave, be sure to get in contact because we'd love to interview you too and get to know more about what you work on and how you use Arcweave in your workflow. Absolutely. Okay then, and uh, until then, uh, stay strong, stay healthy, uh, stay creative, and let the games begin.